Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a beautiful song off of uh, Queen's last album. We're gonna learn how to do These Are the Days of Our Lives. Uh, uh, I guess the last album with uh, Freddie Mercury, so Queen, last album from Queen, really. Uh, uh, this is a, it's a beautiful song. It's got a fantastic guitar solo in it too, so I'm gonna be covering that as well. Uh, Brian May did not disappoint on this one. Uh, but before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already and ring that notification bell so you know when I release a new video. Um, and like, comment on the videos, of course, it helps me out on, with YouTube. And if, if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube as well, which some people ask, um, if you're so inclined, you can join my Guitar Academy. It's the number one way, one way to support anything that I do online is just join my Guitar Academy. The YouTube couldn't exist without it. Um, that you'll see a link to the description below. It gives you a free seven day trial to my academy. And my academy has all of my guitar courses from complete beginner stuff to advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. You get personalized support from me as well. And uh, we've got a great community there. Hope you'll join it. And like I said, it's a very, it's a great way of, even if you just watch the song listens here on YouTube, it's a great way of supporting them. So free seven day trial, but just click in the link below. All right, so let's jump into the song. So I'm uh, in standard tuning here and we have a, a few chord progressions play those songs. We had basically now preface this. I'm not trying to do what Brian. I didn't even check and see what Brian May plays live with this. Um, I'm I'm really what I'm trying to do is um, emulate what's going on the keyboard part because the original recording is mostly a keyboard track. There's a couple of fills, you know that uh, that Brian May will fill in with some chord stuff, but it's it's a keyboard dominated track. Keyboard in Congress. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to play those chords instead. And uh, Brian May will also add some fills, little lead guitar fills throughout the song, but I'm not going to be doing those. I'm really just going to focus on his main guitar solo and the chord progressions as they're played, you know, kind of arranging them for guitar that were originally done on the synth. So this is not sure how he plays it live. I, I'm, I didn't really kind of check that. I wanted to kind of just play like the album version. All right, so let's start here with the uh, with the verse. Now that could probably just that end of the second half of that could really be just considered the pre-chorus I know, but we'll just call it all the verse. So we're gonna start with just a regular C major chord. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna go to an F major chord with but keep C in the bass. So it's gonna go to a second version F uh, major chord. So it's pretty easy to transition from where we're at already. So you're gonna leave this uh, ring finger here on the third fret on the A string. What you're gonna do is you're gonna move your middle finger over to the second fret on the G. And to replace what you're doing on the D string, you're gonna come down onto the third fret there on the uh, D string. And if you want for extra credit, you can bar the top two strings. So you, you can play the high E string, that F. So that gives us an F major chord, but with C in the bass. And then we go back down to the C. So we have this. And then, so you just play that real quick. And then back to the C. And then we're gonna kinda do the same thing off of an F chord. We're gonna go to an F major bar chord. So the full bar at the first fret, um, second fret on the G, third fret on the D, and the A. So you can just leave that bar there going the whole time across all six strings. You can have that F major chord, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to a B flat major chord, but you're gonna keep that F in the bass. So it's now a second version of B flat chord. So all that means is keep the bar, you're gonna have the, the bass note, the root note of the chord is on the fifth fret of the A string, but like I said, you still gonna have that 
I'm sorry, that first fret of the A string. So I'm gonna have that first fret of low E in there too, but that's the fifth of the chord. And then you're gonna have the third fret barred across the D, G, and the B. So first fret on the low E and A, third fret on the D, G, and the B. And that's a B flat in, in second inversion, and then back down the E F. So we have this. So we basically do those that chord, whole chord progression twice. The beat for the verse. Now here you can consider this where we're going from here to be the second half of the verse or just the pre-chorus, but it looks like this. Sometimes it'd be better. And keep that going. If you want to keep that going. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a second. So it starts with a C major chord with G in the bass. So we have a lot of second inversion triads here. So that's just like a C major chord, right? But take this note on the, the third fret of the A string and move it over to the third fret of the low E there. And then replace that note that you left on the A string with your pinky. So now I have a C major chord with that G in the, in the bass on the low E string. So a couple of measures of that. That resolves to a G major chord. I like the G major with the open B string there, so that resolves there. So you can hear that in the song. And I'm not really staying away from the high E string, really. From there it goes to a D minor chord for a couple measures again. And then A minor chord for a couple measures. And then we're just gonna end it here with a G chord again, that G, that version with the open B string, not this one, the open B G G major chord. And you hear this. which is just the open D and the B, second fret on the D, then first fret on the B, then third fret on the D, and third fret on the B. So what this. So you can just do that by itself. Or you can try to keep the G going underneath it. That and just move over those chords, and then when you get to this one, you'd have to switch the note that's playing the bass note to your, your uh, middle finger. So, a little bit more difficult, but it sounds nice, it keeps the sound nice and full. Um, and then that brings us to the chorus, which sounds like this. to the verse. So um, we have kind of a lot of moving lines and a lot of that, that stuff that like we did in the verse going on to the, the one, the six, four, and back to the one. So um, we have uh, this C major chord though. Now I'm trying to get that melody that's going on there. So we're going to have the C major, I'm going to have the regular C major, I'm going to add the G on top, the high G there, so the, the third fret on the high E string. And then what we're gonna do to keep those moving lines going, we're gonna play now, move this finger over to the first fret on the high E string, pick up your pinky, and place the pinky there 
on the third fret of the B. So you have the first fret on the high E now, third fret on the B. So you have this. So you basically, you basically just changed, you stay in the same fret, you just changed, you just switched strings with those two fingers. And then to a regular C major chord without the, with just the open high E. So we have this. All right, now from there, we're gonna go to the, um, um, uh, so we have this. So the G chord. Now the G chord with the open B. And then like we did earlier, to the C major with the G in the bass. And then back to the G. So we have this. Really nice chord here, an F sus two chord. So this is going to be uh, the first fret on the low E, fifth. Uh, I'm sorry, third fret on the A string, third fret on the D, then the open G. We cross that a couple times, just from the low E to the open G. So repeat that. So you do that whole riff twice, and then you start repeating it again, but you're gonna skip this F2 the, the third time around. It looks like this. So I went, so instead of going to that the third time through, I went to a B flat major chord. So this does the first fret on the A string. I'm playing this with my pinky. I'm trying to do the bars with my pinky, but it's up to you whether you should use your ring finger or what most people would do. So first fret on the A, then barring the third fret on the D, G, and the B. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this B flat in the bass, play a C uh, major chord on top of it. So, so that B flat major chord, and then go over here and you're gonna play the second fret, you still got the B flat on the, the first fret of the A string. Play the second fret on the D, open G, first fret on the B, open high E. So that's a C major chord on top. And then back, back to the uh, B flat. So we have this. From there, we just go to an A minor. And then we resolve another look to the C with the G in the bass. To the G. And then the F sus 2. Alright, so all together for the chorus. All right, then it goes back to the same verse again, and then the same, or same verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then the same thing we just learned. Repeat everything. Um, and then we get to the, uh, the solo. So Brian May's solo here is really interesting. Starts out really quiet with some like kind of uh, plucked, more clean tones, but kind of sustainy, <laughs> just, just crazy. Then it goes into this like soaring, delayed wrenched thing. Um, but underneath that, first, we have this.
back to the chorus there. So we just basically play that F sus2 once. Uh, kind of one measure. And then we go to the uh, a D minor chord for a couple of measures. So an A minor. This is what he's doing, kind of the plucking, the really kind of light, little clean stuff he's doing. And then we go to an E minor 7 chord. So easy to just kind of play this, like the open E, second fret on the A, open D, open G, um, third fret on the B, then open IE. So a couple measures of that too. So we have this F sus2. All right, then we go to that B flat major, just for one measure. Then the A minor for one measure. Then a, a G for a couple measures. And that leads us into the uh, one that he kind of that kicks in the distortion and the delays on the solo. So that that's the first half of the solo is the F sus2, to the D minor, to A minor. Minor seven. So that B flat for one measure, A minor for one measure, and then the G for a couple measures. Then uh, when the distortion kicks in, where uh, well for the lead guitar part, we still now go back to the D minor now for a couple measures. Do an A minor for a couple measures. Minor for a couple measures. And then we had that same ending, that B flat major, A minor to the G. Alright, so those are the, the notes that are going on underneath the solo. I'm gonna play through the solo for you right now. I won't be able to completely get the kind of sustain just like because I gotta kind of stick with a clean setting at the beginning. It's kind of hard. He's got some overdubs, like he'll use a clean tone and then he'll have this really like sustaining delay thing. Um, but I'm gonna stick with a clean tone for all those notes in the beginning. And then I'll obviously kick in the distortion for the uh, second half of the solo. So we have this. Some really really cool stuff there. So let's start with this clean thing. So there's a little uh, phrase that I'm not even exactly sure if it's on. Um, let's see if I can add something to this. Yeah. Um, is there, I don't even know if they're on guitar, but there's like kind of little effect is there, so it sounds kind of cool. So we'll play that eight on the high E then. Then um, um, 10, 8 on the B string, and then back to the 10 on the B. And I hear this note is with some gain on it. Um, you letting that ring, which we obviously don't have on it. And then, so that's a quick little slide down from the 10 to the 8 to 6 on the B. Now you see I'm plucking this, I'm kind of holding my pick between these, so you can put your pick wherever you want. Uh, but I'm just kind of plucking uh, with upstrokes on that with my index finger. It gives it kind of a snappy sound. So when you get to that 6, go to the ninth fret on the G, then the 7, and then slide up to 9. 
uh, and then play nine. Uh, I'm just ten nine there. So we have this. So. All right, from there. So that's sliding into 12 on the G, then play 10, 9, 7, so, sorry, sorry, 10, oh, sorry, 10, 9, then 10, 7. There you go. Then play 9, 7 again. So like this. Alright, and then we have this little bit right here. So that's going 7 up to 9, 10, back down to 9, 7. Then you're going to pull off 9 to 7 on the G, then down to 5 on the, on the G string. And then we're going to have this. That's going to be 8 on the B, and a kind of a 10th step, uh, the 10th uh, fret, you're going to kind of, kind of slow half step bend and releases. And then resolve that down to the 8th fret on the B. And now we get to the fun stuff. So we're going to be, um, now he plays this with a time delay, which I don't have set up. So he has kind of like a quarter, I think it's kind of like a quarter note set up with the tempo of the song. So he goes, da, da, da. so it starts echoing whatever he does, like kind of a quarter note later. So um, I don't have that set up. So it actually makes you be able to hear the notes if that's not going on so much. So I have a normal delay here on my lead setting, but nothing that's going to keep you from hearing the actual notes I'm playing because it can be difficult to hear what he's actually doing on the guitar with all those delays coming in with, at equal volume. Um, just repeating what he did. So, but what he's doing is he's doing the same pattern twice, two frets apart. So we have this. And he does that one fret higher. Of course, the ending, he jumps up and grabs a different note. So, what's going on here? We're going to have this. We're going to start with the 10th fret on the B string, and then you're going to go to the 12th fret on the high E string. And slowly bend it up a half step. Then pick that note again, and release, and pull off to the 10th fret, over to 13 on the B, back to 10 on the high E string. All right, then we're going to play, pull off 13 to 10 on the, on the uh, B, over to 12 on the G, back to that 10 on the B. And then from here, So from there, we're going to play, after we went to that 10 on the B, we're going to go back down to the G and play 12, pull off to 10, and slide down to 9. So after you get to that 9, you're going to go back to 10 and pull off from 10 to 9 on the G. Over to 12 now on the D. Pull off to 10, and then go back to that 12 and slide it up to the 14th fret. And then you kind of some vibrato on it and slide it down the D string. So we have this. A little bit slower. Now 
I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but up two frets. Except at the very end, instead of going sliding like it would be 14, 16 now, instead of 12, 14, instead of doing that slide 14, 16, after you play this 14, 12 at the end of the lick, Right here, go up and grab the 15th fret on the B string. So it's, it's like a beautiful note to just jump up to and grab. And then, so that's a 15th fret little ring, kind of a bending release down, down to 13 on the B, 12, then 14 on the G, 12, back to 14, slide up to 16. My brother there, so we have this. And we're gonna end the solo like this. So that's kind of just some staccato uh, playing the 12th fret there on the G string. So kind of mute it. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then that goes to the 15th fret on the B string. And to kind of holster that bending releases there. Three of them to be exact. And then go down to the 13th fret, pull off to 12, and then hammer back on 13. So from this part. Alright, so from there we just go back into the same exact chorus again, except you're gonna at the, at the end of the chorus you're gonna hear that F when it gets to that F2 chord, instead of just playing it one time, it holds it for like four times through. That, that, that F sus2 chord. And then it's gonna resolve out to the end of the chord song. Just that C major with G in the bass. Now, like I said, there's there's some fills going over that last Brian May's got some fills. So if you want to attempt them, I'm not I don't didn't really transcribe them, but it's kind of up here. The... It's kind of just doing a bend at the 20th fret of the beast room. Kind of stuff going on up there like I said, i did not transcribe that part i didn't do any kind of the fill stuff i just stuck with the main solo and then the chord progression so i hope you guys enjoyed it it's a fantastic song um and got some great guitar work uh by brian may as well all right i'll see you guys again soon for guitar lessons 365.com